Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, we are back again. Uh, this week has been a has a very complicated week for many, many of us. Uh, we were already dealing with coronavirus, and then this devastating storm comes and just uproots Odisha and Bengal. Um, these are confusing times. These are tough times. These are the times of hardship. And uh, my next guest today evening, um, she has uh, encountered hardship right from when she was a little kid. And um, from that, today she's an amazing crusader, amazing fighter, and of course, amazing singer. Uh, we all call her as the singing nun. Um, but uh, I know her as, of course, a dear friend. I also know her as somebody who has dedicated her life to people who need that love. She has nothing of her own. It's, she just always is about sharing, caring, giving. And I think this is a very important uh, uh, evening today where uh, I'm getting on board Anicha and uh, with all of you because I think al also little clarity will also happen that how does one deal with crisis? How does deal with uh, mental tension? How does, how does one reach out and help other people? So um, I shall not delay any further and I will get you on... Please welcome Ani Chwing Drolma. Namaskar Ani. Namaskar. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, Ani is, uh, as I said before, she's a, a dear friend. I, uh, we often chat about so many other things. But one thing that I <coughs> keep on learning from Ani is positivity. And trust me, guys, uh, she has a life which is tough, uh, to say it simply. But she's always positive always looking for solutions and she's an action woman she's an action woman um, whenever i've gone to her place in Kathmandu, uh, she'll take out a car help that person go there help that person uh, so she she just fascinates me how much energy can a, a woman have um, ani where do you get this energy from from life itself and the desire the very essential desire that we all share who wish to be happy the strength comes from the real life actually and um, trying to find ways how i can see myself in the others that's how i've been taught and my teacher raised me with such values mm -hmm. and i try to practice them in real so probably that's where i i get my strength i guess <laughs> um ani um before i ask you to sing because that's that's the, the most beautiful gift that you ever had. I just want to yeah. uh, just quickly, um, not because of anything else, I'm a huge fan of your singing and your voice. That's why. Um, Thank you. You um, left home pretty early, right, Ani? Yeah, at the age of 13. Mm. And uh, then from there, straight to the world of monastic what? life. A monastery, monastery life. Yeah. Uh, is that a difficult it. life, uh, Ani, the monastic life? Oh, no, not at all. Actually, it's uh, people seem to carry such a very wrong concept of a monastery being very difficult life. But it, mm -hmm. on the contrary, actually, for me, it was the paradise for me, actually, where I escaped mm -hmm. from, I mean, compared to what I was going through, really. It was the paradise that I could really feel at that I mean when I first entered the place it was so beautiful and then the energy that I felt of my Guruji you know where from, I mean where I took refuge you know the the loving kindness that that I experienced was amazing that I could never really experience before that I mean except that of course you experience that from your mother but then at home the love of a mother and the compassion of a mother there is always 
taken for granted. You know. I agree. But uh, it, compared to the life that I, I mean, the, the experience that I had of a man in my life was first my father, my late father. Mm -hmm. And the energy of a man that I found another one in the monastery was my teacher. It was mm. completely opposite. Yeah. True. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to say, you, you were a naughty child, you used to love singing, you were dancing around, moving around. So, monastery life was a disciplined life, Anu. But I've, I, every time I've talked to you, I get this feeling, this, this teacher of yours, in many ways, he was also protecting you. He was asking you to fly, but also protecting you. That is amazing yeah. for me. You see, um, the discipline that we normally think of in, in a very conservative way is different from the discipline that we actually in the monastery very essentially think of. The discipline is not about just the physical external discipline. Uh, most important discipline is the inner uh, uh, intentional uh, discipline. Your, your emotional in, in discipline. Th those are the things that are mostly focused on, really. Um, so external disciplines are sometimes kind of a, you can ignore at, I mean, at times when you realize that if you're really clear in your mind that your emotional uh, discipline or your, uh, your mental discipline is very clear, what you're supposed to follow and, 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 and you know, careful and that's I that's what I found and actually that helped me to really heal myself actually you see in fact I can share a story with you please, what I was tr trying to really say as, as I'm sure many of you have heard this story of a Zen monk you know two monks who uh, who were studying under the same teacher you know and one day they were sent to the village uh, to do their pujas and rituals and on the way back to the monastery they had to cross a river at the back of the river they found a very beautiful attractive young lady uh, who were uh, who was afraid of crossing the river mm. and suddenly one of the monk just um, offered uh, to carry that woman on on his back and cross the river, you know, and when they, they reached the, the other side of the river, he dropped the women, the beautiful lady, and then both were walking towards the monastery. Before they entered, the, crossed the gate of the uh, monastery. monastery, one of the monk who did not touch, even touch uh, the woman, hmm. actually as being a monk, I mean, from our external physical discipline, you're not supposed to touch women. But then, you see, the other didn't touch the woman, the one not only touched, but he carried her on his back um, and crossed the river. Mm. But before they entered the monastery, the other one who did not carry the woman uh, said to his friend and said, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complain this to our, our master. Uh, mm. What you did today was terrible. And, mm. and his friend asked, what did I do? And his friend said, you carried a woman on your back. Yeah. And then the, the monk who actually carried the woman said, oh, but I dropped that woman long ago, but you're still carrying her. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, my God. So, so what this, a beautiful story. Um, so when we talk about uh, the, the discipline, it's not only, mm. only about the external physical discipline that is important mm. of course but uh, the more important is your inner discipline so Ani, is this your is this your mother sorry oh yes is that, is... that's uh the one in the blue is my yeah. beautiful mother and okay. beside that there's a picture of me at the age of 13 with my precious teacher guruji see it's beautiful, <laughs> beautiful moments. Yeah. Yes, yes. Ani, um, uh, I will, uh, I will bother you to uh, sing something for us, Ani. Just because you know, it's a very strange time, Ani. Everybody's nerves are a little, you know, roughed up. It, we are locked down now for almost more than two months. All of us, we don't know the future. What's happening? Yeah. That there's a restlessness. So, 
your voice always calms me down at least and i want to share this experience with people who are watching this i'll play the okay. guitar with you sanje guru rambo che guru kanda de thank you so much ali it is uh, it is uh, i don't understand the meaning but i understand the vibrations of it thank it's you. just well, so so beautiful it's a beautiful prayer i mean especially at this kind of degeneration time a lot of negativity in the emotional level intellectual level physical level external elementally you know in the elements environments everywhere we we somewhere deep down inside makes you, us feel like everything seems unbalanced you know like it's the turbulence is there emotionally <coughs> environmentally everything so this is a prayer that we strongly believe that uh, it has the power to pacify all these um, uh, what do you call it uh, the anxiety the people's hearts are like very busily filled up with the fear of unpredictability what's going to happen <clears throat> fear is everywhere so well i i i do this prayer quite frequently every day beautiful beautiful <laughs> um anil will uh, come straight to an issue which is currently uh, bothering me a lot and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people is that as i told you remember that uh, uh, the east of uh, india especially odisha and uh, bengal have gone through a devastating uh, cyclone yeah. and Even in uh, the one, they have yes. a very bad floods mm. yeah. yeah so it's really sad. and the timing makes it worse because of the lockdown and poor people they don't know how the food is coming houses have just gone away it's it's a it's a it's horrible ani i'm going to take you back a few years and i remember when the devastating earthquakes had come in kathmandu and had just demolished nepal actually i remember and i talked a lot to you about it that how you work day and night to help people ani can you tell us and i'm going to ask you a very very strange question many many people ask this question how do you help people how does one help people is it money well, is it things can you just tell us you see i don't know i mean at certain extent maybe money does make a difference of course of course it's just a tool but then it's the human heart you know human heart that feels for another human 
being. I think that's the most beautiful thing. And though the situation was very disastrous, I mean, people were all shaken up with a lot of fears, unpredictability. A lot of people lost their precious lives. A lot of people were injured and a lot of people were homeless and everything. In spite of all these very sad incidents, there was something that was really beautiful. Uh, some people might think that I'm crazy to say this, but then, but then in reality, to be honest, you know, like something so beautiful that I experienced after the earthquake. Of course, the earthquake itself was in a natural disaster, which we had no control over. But then mm. what was happening afterward is that every, anywhere you look around, any, anyone who you meet, everyone is talking about how to help. What can beautiful. I do? Beautifully said. And uh, that disaster invoked so much of kindness and compassion in people's heart, not only in people, uh, people of, in, in the heart of people uh, in Nepal, but people around the world. People were all talking about how can, how can we send support to you? What can we do for you? What is it that we, you need from us? And people were all showing their care and concern of our well-being here. Mm. And that was so beautiful of any disaster situation. You know, as I said earlier, natural disasters, no control over it. We can't do anything. We had to go through it. But afterwards, the, con the, the, the impact of it, you know, in one way, when you, you really see it through in a deeper level, the most beautiful human nature actually comes out. It is activated to the most extended level. And, and the same thing that is happening in around the world today also it, due, due to the epidemic, you know, the COVID-19 thing is happening. But at the same time, there are people, I mean, I'm a very small example. You know, I'm running around. I feel like this is an opportunity to really uh, get to do uh, get to find the best reason of my existence on this earth um, uh, find the best use of my uh, my 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 strength my ability my potential um, you know i found a chance to find the best reason of my existence you know yeah and yeah. It makes me feel good it's Not that I mean to say that, oh, because of the others' mis mi uh, what do you call it, M misery, uh, I'm enjoying. No, no, not like not, not not like that. But because of the misery of human uh, being, sometimes it helps. It it invokes the best of human uh, nature. I I I feel so. Um, and they're not only me. I'm just a very small example. There are millions of other people they're really exhibiting the best of human qualities in the time of disaster, actually. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember... But of um, course, I, I do feel sorry for those who are really, I mean, I mean, facing very yes. direct experience yes. of these painful and uh, helpless moment. Of course, it's there. I feel for them, I pray for them, and I don't know what I can do, but I want, I wish I can do something for them. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, your your today's uh, chat is helping a lot of people who are watching a lot of people are watching from bengal ani and it's uh, this strength this uh, your experiences because uh, you are ex extremely experienced people who are watching ani is an expert now in disaster management but uh, <laughs> but i, I think one, one of the things which i want to bring to the point that sometimes the healing can be a small thing like once ani had told me this that after the earthquake the, everybody had separated out and just the joy of getting a child connected to the father or the mother that is amazing just amazing the um, joy you experience by absolutely. by just being able to you know facilitate that experience for the others it's amazing ani a lot of your fans uh, want you to um, sing that beautiful song which uh, 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 new had uh, composed uh, Pula that uh, that song yeah Pula. So can you sing us I love that song and of course uh, uh, it's a beautiful song and a lot of your fans love it if you could sing this yeah um, this I, would be actually 
perfect song for people in people's life actually whoever are going through some confusions and in and and how to uh, perceive the different experiences in mm. your life i think this would be a very good song um okay sabhi sang ho samiro maya nahi esto jo bhiti ni malai lagos mai jasto sukho pan ma khuchai sukhi sansar kahara ko aankha ma kahai sansar चित्त शुद्ध हो सुमेरो बोली ही बुद्ध हो मेरो पैताली नो आखा को आखा म beautiful beautiful and uh, you know I, i remember that evening your house in um, kathmandu where you knew uh, we all had sat down and you sang the song and knew in his deep <laughs> voice on his guitar yeah. and ani and ani by the way guys is a brilliant hostess uh, she uh, she and her <laughs> students had done this amazing momos uh, i love that and um, she's she i i i, I call ari her rock star she's like a she's a full <laughs> on uh, there there is two parts of her one is this healing spirituality and the other part is she's a iron woman uh, one one day I'll, i'll not forget we were going in the gaadi and there was a, another person who was on the other side a government official who was the wrong way she speeded up the car like a like a hollywood chase yeah! and went straight down and got down from the car and told that person ne please that why are you going the wrong way passion fire honey this is <laughs> it's amazing um and actually what is uh, very interesting i don't know how you do this uh, you know the kings and the emperors and you also know the shelterless the homeless the abused you you seem to coexist in both these worlds how difficult is it honey no i mean i really don't think in such a manner actually you know uh, at the end of the day it's human being at the same i mean like as a beggar wish to be happy in life the similarly the king wish to be happy in life as the beggar would be i mean would wish to be loved same way the king would wish to be loved so you um you see my my i i would say it's all because of my teachers um the way he brought me up the mm. the way he helped me to transform the way i perceive things in my life mm. and whether it be be that and be it be like a human being or an animal or a, or nature or however whatever experiences that i i come across i try to try to relate to it in a very normal uh, comfortable manner actually i maybe maybe because i don't think too much Mm-hmm. I take it as it comes, you know, with the most joyful heart that I as, as much as possible. I mean, of course, at times there are times when I'm my mood is not so light and happy, but I try my best, you know, to give what I would really wish for myself. Ani um uh many people know and many people don't know that you run a school 
um, a nunnery school. Uh, I have been there. It's beautiful. It's amazing what's happening. Um, but what I want to share with the audience today is a uh, something else. Um, we were talking about, uh, and you had said Chandruji that my blessing is that thanks to the music, I can use that to create opportunities for people who actually need it. And I didn't understand what it meant that time. And you had told me that I never charge a fees for singing. What I do is, what is it that I need? And you give an example that while the school was in built, you needed a tank, a water tank on top of it. So that the, and you realized that how much that water tank costs. And you said that my objective became that how can I raise the money through my concerts so that I can get a water tank. And I find it a fascinating way to look at life and things, Ani. But tell us about, about the, the idea of the school. What, where, how did it come to you? Well, again, it's about, I mean, it's because of my own life. You know, the life itself, it's, it really teaches you what you really want to do. What ex I mean, like, it gives you a reason to be excited about, you know. At, at times, I would, I would even say that uh, your, your, um, when you don't have, sometimes it's a blessing. Because you will understand how it feels not to have it for the others. Mm -hmm. The pain, um, the unfulfilled uh, dream or desire of mine has become the reason why I want to fulfill others' desires and, and, and their wish. And because it gives me so much joy as if I'm fulfilling my own wish. So these young girls, you know, when I was a young girl, I really wanted to study. I, I had this kind of a deep uh, inner confidence of uh, being able to perform extraordinarily if only I had the opportunity or the convenience of the opportunity to, uh, or, or someone to support me. But somehow, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know how to put it, but uh, somehow I did not get that. And, but then this, the, 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 what do you call it? The, the space, the unfilled up space that I had in mm. my heart has become the reason why I wanted to really educate uh, other children, and especially mm -hmm. girls. Um, because I feel like the experience that I went through due to the very wrong belief or wrong cultural practices that we still very ignorantly carry in our society, and where people seem to carry this uh, perception of uh, educating girls are not so important, you know, I was always very upset about this, uh, this perception in this society, whether that was carried by a man or a woman, both in our society. So I somehow always kind of rebellious character thinking that, why not? Mm -hmm. But somehow I could not fulfill that in my life. Mm -hmm. And that developed the very strong uh, thirst and desire to do it for others, you know. That's mm -hmm. why I, I started the school. I, because I believe that we as girl has the same, if not more, the same potential to um, be educated and be able to contribute in the society in a very e in equally manner. I mean, mm. without both, it's not possible to create a harmony, you know. Ani, are these children from, the um, are these children from economically backward? And also yes. abused homes? Are they abused children also? Yes. Uh, some of them are from the very abusive uh, domestic violence, uh, experience of domestic violence children. Uh, many, I mean, many are from the families who cannot afford, you know. Even if they can afford, they, they would always prioritize the boys to go to school rather than the girls. So mm -hmm. I try to find ways how I can uh, rescue them and give them a better future by there is a uh, there is a um, uh, beautiful uh, photograph of uh, uh, ani and the kids uh, i don't know whether you guys can see ani can you see uh, the yeah. children yeah yeah then no, there is kids, uh, yeah yeah kids you know? yeah yeah they're angels and i have met <laughs> i have met your angels 
This is such a beautiful uh, photograph. Um, yeah. In fact, I want to tell the audience who are watching this uh, is that um, um, so when I had gone to Ani's school and uh, all these kids came running around Ani and Ani was like hugging them and holding them and lovely bonding. And at the end of it, they, they had did a culture program for for me and they danced and they did beatboxing and all that. It was like really cool. <laughs> See, what, is, what, I, what I like about Ani's school is it's not like, like just a very strict strip. You can express yourself and imagine nuns doing beatboxing and I loved it. I just loved it. But what was the most emotional moment was that at the end of it, all the children sang, give me some sunshine, give me some rain, give me another chance. I want to grow up once again. You know, guys, when I did this song for a movie, there was a different meaning for that. But when Ani's kids sang this, and those kids from those economically backward houses, abused homes, when they're saying that, give me a chance, I want to grow up once again. You just cannot stop but tears rolling down because you realize that how fortunate that they have met Ani or how fortunate that Ani has met them. Because I can see today how happy they are and how happy and because of them, how happy Ani is. Am I right, Ani? Yes, 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 absolutely. I mean, you know, people think that I've done so much for them, but then somehow deep in my heart, how I believe is that they are on this earth with their own karma. Hmm. I play as a role of an activator only. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the uh, the blessing from my own good karma that I can play the role as to activate their good karma, which they already had it from their past deeds. Mm -hmm. And somehow maybe, you know, we say sometime we must come together in order to, you know, uh, to experience or to to bloom the flower of blessing for yeah. the world. I, I, I love uh, I love this photograph. It is so beautiful. Look at the joy. Look at the joy in in uh, the faces, Ani. Ani, um, I had promised myself that I will uh, I will talk to you for every uh, every ten minutes. I want you to sing uh, uh, a song song two. Where did you disappear? One minute. One minute. One minute. Ah, sorry. Uh, I was saying that uh, you need to sing. Um, uh, you need to sing something for us now. Chant or something. Just because. I will never get this opportunity. It's so rare to get you. And um, uh, and fortunately, today the internet is working fine in both our countries. Uh, yeah. So um, just sing something just, just for the peace and quiet. Anything that you feel like. Uh, another <coughs> song composed by <coughs> most beloved composer, New. You know, it's okay. a song to um, wish, like, I'm, I'm sure you, any, I mean, in India, everyone would understand this wordings. Jai hos mangal hos. Mm. It says, Jai hos timro mangal hos tara chitta sabhai bhari komal hos. I wish you victory. I wish you auspiciousness. But may your heart always remain kind. Beautiful. Uh, yes, yeah. so that's, may your wish for happiness be wished to not to uh, cause any harm to anyone. In mm. your happiness, may I rejoice. That's what the wording says. Beautiful. Jai ho stimro mangal ho Jai ho stimro mangal ho Eta sadhai Mangal ho, ita 
सधई कोमल beautiful beautiful of oh, oh my god honey when you sing na <coughs> of all, you know i'm being little selfish but of all the things that you have been god has given you gifted you for me what is fascinating is from the world that you have come the way you have grown up this voice honey uh it's it's such a powerful voice and, and i don't mean singing technique no just the god's gift to be able to heal somebody just listening to your voice and i think that is why uh, wherever you go in the world wherever you perform you win so much love from people uh, everybody in fact i'm going i'm going to change the mood a bit um, uh, basically tell the audience that how um, how crazy ani is for me is that one day i had gone to uh, i had gone to ani and she said that look i'm i'm going for lunch somewhere and uh, Uh, do you want to join me so i said uh, no no uh, you go ahead uh, i'll just wait in the hotel and i'll catch you after the lunch and she goes and meets that what a whoever she met and then later on she comes to me and says that oh you know um, and ani is i think uh, i forgot to mention she was a unicef ambassador uh, and so she said i met some other unicef ambassadors there is guy i met who who kind of plays uh, football and so she had met david beckham so i like you met david beckham and you didn't tell me you said no i told you come for lunch so i didn't know who i'm meeting so this is ani she's absolutely oblivious to the people she meets and yet so many people love her ani you have to tell me another another one of of the of the stories um um sorry um this keeps on going away yeah um You have, you, uh, Ani. Sorry, you got uh, uh, cut. You have to tell me another story of meeting this lady, who I am a huge, huge fan. I will just, I will just uh, show you the photograph first of the lady, and then you can tell me the tell me the story of this person. One minute. Uh, this has to be a, like. Um, so I was one day just talking to Ani about the singers who I love, and. Um, i mentioned to her that uh, you know i'm a huge fan of this singer called crazy chapman and ani looks at me and says uh, i know she is dear friend i said what crazy chapman she said yeah so <coughs> this is the this is a yeah so that's uh, that's crazy chapman for you ani that's how did you meet uh, yeah trying before this <laughs> is school that's my correct school. yes yeah. ani how did you meet her what happened tell me okay i mean not only you i have been a huge fan of tracy chapman myself too and um yeah i mean everywhere i mean any of my friends abroad they knew that i love her you know i love mm. her singing mm. and um once a uh, a friend of mine gave me wanted to give me a gift for my birthday saying that oh ani i want to buy you a ticket a uh, concert ticket of tracy chapman in hamburg in mm. germany when you come this time mm. Mm. and i want you to meet her there mm. and i said look i don't want to meet her like this because somewhere deep inside i have this feeling that i will meet her in a much better way mm. and i said that very uh, very bluntly you know like and i said i don't want to buy the ticket Mm-hmm. And then the second chance was that in one of the music festival in Basel in Switzerland mm-hmm. it was a huge music music festival and mm-hmm. uh, she was performing 5 days before me mm-hmm. and my friends they were all excited about it and saying that oh I knew you should go there earlier and go for her concert there since you guys are playing for the same music festival mm-hmm. and i somehow hesit i was hesitant to go again and i said no i have this feeling that i will meet her in a better you know way situation and i again i was very stubborn and i didn't go at that time but i was quite very proud because i had this poster of myself my name and her name on the same post- posters you know from the same festival mm-hmm. and then in 2006 uh, 2007 in february um, my mother passed away in 2006 december mm. 
Mm -hmm. And in in February, I was kind of sad because it was just right after a festival in in Nepal. Because during the festival, you miss your your most loved one during the mm -hmm. festival, especially. And I was kind of sad, and I was at home, and I knew a friend in Nepal called Peter, mm -hmm. and he called me and said, "Hi, Ani, how are you?" I said, "I'm okay. How are you, Peter?" And he, Peter said. Ani, um, Tracy wants to see you. Oh, oh my and God. I said, who Tracy? And he said, Tracy Chapman. <laughs> I said, well, are you kidding? <laughs> oh, really? Are you kidding? And he said, no, P uh, it's Ani, really, I'm serious. She's in Kathmandu and she wants to see you. She wants to come to see your school. Hmm. I was like for a moment kind of really like feeling very funny. I didn't, I don't know how to express this. Actually, it was uh, Tracy Chapman who really helped me to um, understand the feeling of a real crazy fan, how it makes you feel crazy, I mean, feel very funny. Because you see, I have come across some of the very fa funny and uh, crazy fans and at times there were moments when I used to judge them by feeling like why are they behaving, behaving like, like this. this so crazy and it makes it's it's nonsense kind of feeling you know I really wasn't able to relate to their feeling but it was Tracy Chapman when she came to the school and when I was sitting just right in front of her I was feeling very funny you know I was behaving very funny I feel and then I said, okay, now I know how a fan feels. And from now on, I must make sure that I respect these crazy behaviors of fans. <laughs> you know? It yeah, was so um, yeah, another, another incident uh, where you, you behaved like a crazy fan. And exactly. We must, we, exactly. Must, we must talk about it is that when during our 100 Days in Himalayas concert, in the oh, front yes. row, there was Gulzar Sab sitting there. Yes. <laughs> another another experience in my life that was like, oh my God, I wasn't like, my breath was becoming short. And uh, I I really, I was, um, my words were like kind of, fum what do you call it? The right word was yeah. fumbling? Yes, yes. And it was very embarrassing, actually. I was so nervous and so, uh, so shy. Mm. I know. Mm. I, I was feeling very funny, actually. I, I'm not like that usually when I'm, not in front of these guys anyway it really is funny feeling and now i know how a, a crazy fan feels for you you know and i really respect their feeling <laughs> now i can totally relate relate to them and i can really connect to them yeah so that's how i met her she came to the school she uh, met my my children she even sang for us oh my god Beautiful. Yeah, I, I invited very few selected friends of mine and I kind of quietly whispered uh, to their ears of um, who is visiting the school and, 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 and they can come along with me if they want. I didn't tell anybody actually. I did not want to tell anybody at all because I wanted her to feel comfortable. Um, yeah, so that's special That's the, yeah. Um, uh, one small uh, incident which is very deeply etched in my mind, a very emotional moment for me was, remember when we had gone to Kathmandu for the 100 Days in Himalayas concert? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, people were watching this and by the way, hi to all of you. I'm sorry, got so engrossed talking to Ani and she has this effect on me. I'm a fanboy moment for her that I forget everything and I see so many messages. Hi to everybody for hearing this. this is a very rare opportunity to talk this incredible uh, uh, lady, uh, crusader, fighter, uh, uh, mother for many, many children, uh, friend to many, many friends, but more importantly, somebody who constantly teaches me that it's out about the action. Uh, don't just sit down and think about it, just do things. And I think I, the next example, the story for me is really huge. So we are performing in Kathmandu in this beautiful auditorium. But when I entered the auditorium, the auditorium was a mess. It was, it was not clean. It was, and I looked at Ani and Ani said that 
don't worry you know it will happen have faith next 6 hours guys what i saw is i've never seen in my life which is all ani's children on the ground with buckets and mop and water and chadu scrubbing cleaning <laughs> scrubbing cleaning ani tell us about that it's as amazing crazy yeah that was really crazy because you know somehow you know you this you have this very the filmy dialogue ye meri izzat ki sawal hai you know correct <laughs> <laughs> very much in that mood <laughs> mm. i wanted everyone to you know especially you guys uh, mm. the very wonderful musicians and of course you shantanu ji and especially kaushiki ji correct. i wanted you guys to fe- feel like wow this is a nice place that we are performing because mm. i've been to this ncpa that is yes. like beautiful auditorium what a yes. what an auditorium you know and so i wanted to live up to that but of mm. course unfortunately things are very compromised here you know mm. in nepal mm. and especially regarding the cleanliness in mm. the auditorium but then mm. i said to my kids and i said look i must not lose face we as nepalis we must not lose our face we must make sure that we impress these people <laughs> so we really worked so hard and we plucked we plucked out uh, from the floor almost 5 uh, 6 kgs of chewing gums <laughs> yes yeah so and then we burned incense and then at the end yeah. of i mean right before the concert when the audiences and then the artists we all entered the auditorium it was full of fragrance you know like aroma of natural incense you know yeah. and uh, i was so happy at the end that you all really felt good about and, it and and then i will share something which uh, which is quite amazing which has never happened to me that generally on stage when ani is singing and she sometimes goes on a i don't want to call the word trance but she gets <laughs> lost and uh, i have to almost wake her out of it to get her back into the tempo and rhythm or whatever it is but that day i let it be because i also realized the mammoth responsibility that ani was dealing with and she was chanting on stage and we were all there and suddenly i saw tears rolling down honey's cheek and i didn't know what to do because i was sitting next to her should i get up should i not get up what to do and then uh, koshiki was sitting on uh, my left she got up she went and and concert is going on there are people who are watching this uh, song is going on and both the women hugged and ani broke down ani do you remember that moment you know it was such a i don't know whether to say it a beautiful mm-hmm. moment but it was such an honest moment i'll never yeah, forget this ani about it right now i i i'm i'm getting back to that moment too. it was very 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 pure and very um it's a deep joy that is very hard to express in the word shantanuji and and a lot of the time i do get the the feedback from the audiences how their how my music makes them feel um uh, like that you know they they get into tears and 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 something feels like washed away and cleansed you know and that's exactly how i was actually getting to experience it i mean kaushiki ji when she really sings her this you know she sings her Absolutely. heart out yeah it's like a real goddess you know the sound of a goddess that i i i was just letting it all go and i was in it and this deep joy that was coming out you know and in the form of tears and at the very i mean you see there's always a struggle between the mind and the heart true uh, in my mind i was like oh my god why is this tear coming out it's so embarrassing kind of feeling because i'm on stage too so i tried to ignore it and i thought like maybe the audiences might not see it you know like while it was rolling it down I try to ignore it but then there was moment when it was not just a few drops of tear it was actually buckets a river of yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I had to wipe them up and I was my nose was running so I had to somehow 
collect yourself stuff, yeah. clean it up you know mm-hmm. and then it was so kind of kaushiki ji you know stood up and came to me and gave me this hug i felt the most uh, divine moment of my life at that time and i sh- i mean shantanu ji i really it's never enough to really word is never enough to express my gratitude to you really for that experience seriously i am forever grateful thank you the so much. word is never enough to my thank you and gratitude for being part of 100 days in himalayas for being part of my life i don't know whether people can see this or not i'm shifting a bit that that painting <laughs> behind is something that ani has ani has given ani gives me so much of love and goes me so many things um uh, ani um, <laughs> um ani uh, there is a uh, in this concert there's a song that is sang with children can you sing a few lines if you don't mind um i'll just give you the skill uh, you can take out the lyrics on your phone yeah yeah My my first Nepali song, <laughs> sung by Ani Choing Zolma. Yeah. <laughs> so when I call in, Jatnaji, I'm waiting for that. No, we'll do this. We'll do this. Uh, let the lockdown get over. We have to do so much of work. Um, Ani, one very important thing that I want to share with the audience, uh, and I know a lot of people are there. Ani, many 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 uh, people who are in the lockdown at home, this pause. has forced them to reevaluate and rethink what are they doing with their lives yeah and sometimes it's not a very easy emotion to take because you may just feel that uh i was probably trying to emphasize and prioritize something which i shouldn't have i need to restart i need to relook i need to realign um i mean or dick butter yes dick butter what do you have to say to them who are going through that transition phase in their life well i mean um at times of course i do feel that it's easier said than done you know it's but then the reality is such that the whole environment is filling up with a lot of anxiety <clears throat> and <the> fear. <clears throat> but at the same time you know people who are capable of really like looking inside and i i even joke about you know since you can't go outside it's time to go inside 
Amazing. It's time for not cinta. It's time for cintan. You know? ah. Am I making sense? Yes, totally. Not for not not the right time for cinta. It's time for cintan. Yeah. I think the vocabulary wise same in Hindi, right? Cinta yeah. or cintan. One is external, the other is internal. Yeah. Exactly. So I think it's um, in my feeling, I felt like maybe it's a time uh, the nature the mother nature is giving us a time to sit down and think and rethink and uh declutter the cluttered things in your life you know um prioritize in the right way things that you had been engaged yourself with yeah i felt like uh, wow it's time to correct things Maybe there are many things that I need to correct uh, in the way I think about I think about life, what I've been doing so far. Of course, there are moments that I, it seems like I've been carried away by the arrogance or or the, or the confidence of what I've been doing was right. Maybe yes, maybe not. Maybe or there may be things in my friendship with certain people maybe i i need to correct many things the way i perceive them I perceive them or or the way i reacted towards their behavior so i've been doing a lot of um, inner analysis you know um and i have come to a certain conclusion of what i should be doing next and uh, and as I, I was sharing before, I mean, uh, before saying that even on, on YouTube, I'm looking into subject like, uh, you know, minimalist, mm. you know, how to become minimalist mm. um, on the on the YouTube, you will you will get to learn about how to become minimalist in your materialistic things. But of course, there i mean i had these very precious time with my guruji i mean when he was alive physically mm. on this earth of many teachings from him on how to become minimalist inside but then of course it seems like i got carried away also mm. there are things that of course i wouldn't say i regret but um, i feel like okay now i'm at the stage of life at the age, age and the both stage of life are in the right time. It's to declutter things and organize and become minimalist in the real sense, uh, you know, correct sense of yes. <laughs> minimalist. Yes. So, I get you. I, get yeah, you. I think, um, yeah, a lot of people, I, I mean, of course, as I said earlier, again, it's easier said than done as I do. I mean, for me, it's easy to say. Uh, of course, in my in context of my own personal way of life, it's maybe a little bit different from the others. But the grihasti people who are with the worldly life, I think it's not that easy. But yet, it's not something uh, impossible. It's difficult, but it is it is not impossible. Mm -hmm. So it's maybe time to declutter things, find ways how you can declutter things in your life, uh, externally, internally, whatever little bit you can do. And I'm quite confident that it can make you feel light. At sure. the end of the day, when you feel light, it feels good, I think. Even with your weight, when you lose, you know, shed off some of your fats, it feels good. So I've been doing a lot of exercise, of doing a lot of shashtanga <laughs> dandwa. So, <laughs> decluttering uh, my body too. <laughs> one of the things which I um, struggle, and I know many people who are watching this uh, uh, will agree with me sometimes. Most of the time, when we want to do something, I mean, first fear comes that suppose I fail, what will people say? Uh, do you get the feeling when you're trying to do something new? No, not really. In that matter, I think I'm very courageous. But of mm. course, at the same time, uh, it's not fear, but it's it's a it's a little bit of a um, what do you call? You care for others. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cause shocks in people's life, but at the same time, uh, not at the cost of your own um, your own uh, um, what do you what a piece of your inner self. 
not at that cost, of course. But you see, you know, even in Hindi, there is a muhavra saying that sabse bada rog kya kahenge log. Mm. So I think the biggest prison that we, we might put ourselves mm. in is with the fear of what people might think, I think. So I, in that matter, I, I, I've always tried to train myself uh, with, the, with the understanding that, of course, we all human beings are born with our innate nature of being very kind and compassionate. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we lack the courage to you know, exhibit that kindness and compassion, I think uh, it will be very sad. It will be a big loss. True. You know, True. big, big, big loss. So we need to really gather some courage to really exhibit your your kindness in the most, even though it might look very, very untraditional or very, what is it, mm. not conventional, mm. which I have been doing that actually. Yeah. I'm not yeah. a very all uh, all uh, the parts that you've <laughs> chosen. Yes, uh, <laughs> the, the, I, I don't know the audience knows this or not that Ani used to drive a motorcycle. Uh, she she's she has danced the tango. She's uh, she's. As I keep on saying that there are so multiple facets to her that uh, it just kind of uh, is astounding. Um, I mean, uh, one of the last things I'm going to talk to you today is about that you've often told me that you get a feeling that the part of you which is a musician uh, performing in front of concerts and all that sometimes you feel like just running away from all that. Um, it is not just you, many, many of my musician friends also are dealing with dichotomies for some time because there are two parts of it. If you are sensitive, then uh, it is not easy to be a, a public performer. Uh, it's so much easier to sit in your house, but when you're dealing with the energy of 30,000, 50,000 or lakh people, it also affects you. Uh, Ani, you want to talk about this? Yeah, I mean, you see, um, I mean, thank God that I, I don't really use uh, that very frequently get in myself engaged into such kind of thought. But uh, uh, as I, I mean, with the blessing of my teacher, mm -hmm. I've been able to go with the flow most of the time. But then there are also moments when I feel like, oh, I'm, you know, like creating a very big, show you know there are thousands of people down there looking at me with a lot of uh, expectation you know um and and the most suffocating thing is when some when people starts to put you into box their frame mm -hmm. their boxes box. or you call it the frame mm -hmm. you know often i try to use this metaphor you know i feel that we human being in our society very conservative societies are such that People who walks around with a small size of a frame, I mean, not necessarily one size, but various different kind of size, depending on the size of their heart, you know, mm. their mind. So some people are with a huge size of a frame, photo frame, uh, some with a very small, some with very, very tiny, where even themselves, they can't fit in it. Mm. So that is that becomes suffocating. So okay. when people see you, they immediately tries to fit you in their frame. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily correct that you have to fit in that for size, in his size or her right. size of the frame. And whenever we don't fit in it, they, 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 these people start to get agitated. Mm -hmm. And their agitation starts to reflect on the way they mm -hmm. treat you or comment on you and, and treat themselves. Mm -hmm. So that kind of uh, very suffocating um, uh, impact that comes to me occasionally, uh, it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And then I feel like, oh, I wish I can disappear. Because none of the things seems to make much sense in the life. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I mean, we all need to be lying on the cremation, you know, bed. So, but every time you every time you share with me this thought that you need to disappear, my heart sinks, and I then try and <laughs> tell you, no, it's not a good idea, not a good idea, <laughs> <laughs> for my own selfish reasons. Um, uh -huh. um, yeah. Well, Ani, um, we have been chatting for more than an hour now. Uh, so really? what I wanted to do is that. Um,
and this is for everybody today um, that um, I want Ani to do a chant, a prayer for, as I said, on my social media also, that for people who really need it. Um, I want all of you to just concentrate, hear the chant that Ani is going to do now. And Ani, if you don't mind, a little longer chant today, just a little bit, sure. uh, so that I just want the internalization. Just concentrate and let's use this power to try and heal people who are actually suffering at the moment. Uh, yeah. This is the best we can do. And uh, yeah. also this is, this is a, some, a very important thing we can do and we must do it. And that Ani is here. I think we should use this opportunity. Ani. Sure. Namo Oh, 
Thank you, Ali. This is, uh, Thank I'm you. sure people who are watching this is priceless. Hindi um, man bhar gaya. Don't feel like <laughs> saying yeah. anything beyond this. So many people are saying so calm and peaceful. We have audience today from so many places uh, around the world. And um, Ani, thank you for coming, sharing your experiences, sharing the peace and happiness, chanting for people who need it. Um, hope I'm going. Hopefully, I'm going to see you very soon uh, when the lockdown comes open. I'm going. To, I told you. I promised you. I'll come to Kathmandu and just rest, relax in your monastery and in your school. And uh, uh, I, your yeah, thing is frozen. Hello, uh, are you there? Uh, just one minute. Um, just one minute, guys. Um, um, can you see her? Yeah. Mm, moment. Um, I think some. What timing for internet to collapse in uh, in Nepal? I think maybe she'll uh, come back. I don't know. But um, I hope she comes back. But thank you, Ani. Thank you, all of you, for coming um, uh, and being part of this. I was not very sure how you would like this session because it's a very internal session it's really about 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 that and i was uh, uh, really uh, but i thank you i think you guys enjoyed this incredibly beautiful woman beautiful woman that's what i need to say um, in fact uh, i'm many of you you know her of course but many of you don't know her that um, she is one of the most important icons in, in Nepal and the amount of joy uh, that she has given to people, kind of work she's doing is amazing. And if Ani doesn't come back in, I'm going to say goodbye on her behalf. Um, uh, just, to hold, just hold on. I, I think it makes so much more sense if Ani can say bye to all of you. Let me try and call her and see if... if uh, she can uh, come on. Oh, Ani's coming. Oh, oh thank God. Um, mm, 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 one minute, one minute, one Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry. Hi. The the in, the electricity went off. <laughs> oh, I well, I was hoping you would come back and say bye to all of your fans that were watching this. Yeah. Actually, most important, Nishantanaji, thank you so much for blessing my life, you know, with your friendship. It, really, it has nourished me too. So much, so much. Thank my you. deepest gratitude thank to you forever. And thank you everyone on the, who are watching us together. I hope you stay safe and take care of yourself, take care of people around you. Just because of the fear of Corona, don't isolate as being another human being from another human being. 
you know, physically dis physical distances, of course, we are supposed to do, but never make distance from your heart to another heart, you know. Before saying goodbye, you have to share with them one last thing. Today was a disabled day. You were you were um, doing something. Um, right? Please tell them about that. I mean, in the lockdown, I've been running around finding ways how I can be useful in contributing towards, you know, making sure that people, less people get infected. So I have protective equipment such as PPE, the personal protection equipments that are what I've been uh, distributing in different hospitals to the health workers, the frontline health workers, the security officers, and then the journalists, media, media personalities who are really working on the front line. But today was very special. The first, uh, first uh, being that I offered my help was to a crawl who was injured and, and lying on the street and he was, uh, he was handicapped. So I picked him up and brought, it, brought him home. And, you what, know, he's what a now beautiful home. story. <laughs> and then the second person that I went, uh, went to offer help with my friends was a couple who were both blind, blind and uh, the wife gave birth to a very, very beautiful child who was just, just three months old and they had difficulty having enough food to eat. So we offered them some rice, I mean, and other stuff that are that were needed and then most touching experience of the day was meeting a mother who was with two grown up handicapped boys you know the son and this mother was completely completely uh showering and nurturing this two young um, two boys one was above 20 years old and one was in his late teenage uh, age both were terribly handicapped and then they were facing a lot of difficulties with limited resources. So I, I, me, along with my friends, we found the really fortunate opportunity to offer our, our small help to them. And so I feel like today was a very, very uh, meaningful and fruitful day for me. So I hope you all, whoever is, uh, you know, listening to us chatting, May you all be able to find good, I mean, many, many opportunities to find, you know, good, meaningful days to live with. Thank you, Ani. Um, you take care. And um, guys, thank you for coming, uh, all of you. Bye -bye. Um, and you take care. And uh, we shall get back soon with uh, another great person who inspires me. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ani. Bye. Take care.